Welcome back to this Computer Science 1 video series. In this module, we'll cover searching and sorting. Searching and sorting is a complex and extensive topic. In the context of Computer Science 1, we'll focus mainly on the practical aspects. Which algorithms are the best, and what are the best practices for using standard library functions to search and sort data? In this first part, we'll give an introduction and focus on the basic searching algorithm, linear search. In subsequent parts, we'll look at various searching and sorting algorithms at a very high level. And then we'll focus on how to use generic searching and sorting algorithms from the standard library. Processing data is a fundamental operation in computer science. Fundamental to data processing are the operations of searching and sorting. These two operations often form the basis of other more complex algorithms, or are assumed as substeps to many other algorithms. They're also good problems to study because they have a large variety of different algorithms with different strategies and properties that can be used to better understand complexity and algorithm analysis. We'll start with searching. Very generally, given a collection of elements A and a key K, we need to find an element in the collection that matches the key. Often we refer to the collection as a haystack and the key as a needle because we're searching for the needle in the haystack. As stated, this search problem is a very general problem. Collections may refer to arrays or other dynamic data structures, such as sets or lists. We didn't necessarily specify that a collection held integers, strings, or structures, because we wanted to keep it general. We also didn't say what matches meant. We should be able to search by any criteria that we want. For example, if we're searching an array of student structures, we could search by a student's NUID, or by their name, or by GPA, or any combination of these things. There are also many different variations on this general search problem. We could simply find the first element in the collection that matches our criteria, or we could find all such elements. Or as we've done before, we could find extremal elements such as the minimum or maximum element. Another thing to think about is, what do we do if the search is unsuccessful? If we don't find the needle in the haystack, we may need a way of indicating that. Our first potential solution to the search problem will be an algorithm called linear search. The basic idea is that we simply iterate through each element in the collection. For each element, we apply our matching criteria. If the element matches, we stop and report a successful search. Thus, we'll be focusing on the first variation, in which we want to find the first element that matches our criteria. If no such element is found after examining them all, we need to return a flag value to indicate an unsuccessful search. Let's illustrate this idea by implementing a linear search algorithm in C. To keep it simple, we'll take an array of integers, as well as an integer key value k. We'll iterate through the array to find the first element equal to k. To report that we found it, we'll return the index at which we found it. To report an unsuccessful search, we'll return a flag value of negative 1, because this should be universally understood as an invalid index. Alternatively, we could have returned a pointer value instead, pointing to the value that matched our criteria. We'll look at both solutions. First, let's write some documentation. Because we're returning an index, our return value will be an integer. We'll need to take an array, its size, and the key. Now we simply need to write a for loop to iterate over the elements. And check whether or not they match the key. If it matches, we'll return the index at which we found it. Otherwise, if we get done iterating over the array and do not find a matching element, we'll return negative 1. Let's go ahead and test this.
we'll search through the array for the element 9, which is at index 2. And it works. Let's change what we're searching for. We'll search for 3. Now the first instance of 3 is at index 3. Even though there's a duplicate, we're searching for the first one. Let's make an unsuccessful search. 42 is not in the array. We would expect it to return negative 1. Now let's write a variation on this. Alternatively, instead of returning an index, we could have returned a pointer to the element that matched our criteria. In that case, we would be returning an integer pointer. Our flag value here changes to null because negative one is not necessarily a valid memory address. We still iterate over the array. And check for equality. But instead of returning i, we'll return a pointer to the ith value. And null for an unsuccessful search. We'll dereference the pointer to get the actual value, as well as use the pointer to print out the memory address. And it resulted in a successful search. Let's try it again for another element. Another successful search. How about an unsuccessful search? We get a segmentation fault because we attempted to dereference the null pointer. Obviously, we need to be more careful. Our solution works, but it's less than ideal. It really only applies if we want to search an array of integers. What if we wanted to search an array of double values or string values or student structures? We may be tempted to take this solution, which we know works, and do a copy pasta and change a few of the variable values along with our search criteria. If we wanted to search along some other criteria, we would need to do yet another copy pasta and separate implementation. Following this pattern, we would have dozens or hundreds or thousands of copy-pasted linear search functions, and one for each criteria. Obviously, this is not a great solution. Our ultimate goal will be to have one single generic searching algorithm, as well as one generic sorting algorithm, that will be able to apply to any type of data with any type of criteria. Before we get there, though, we need to understand searching and sorting a little bit more. In particular, is there a better searching algorithm than linear search? We'll present one such solution in the next part.